In Surah 33, verse 21 of the Quran, Allah declares, You have indeed in the Apostle of Allah a beautiful pattern of conduct for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the final day and who engages much in the praise of Allah. So Muhammad is a beautiful pattern of conduct for Muslims. I certainly hope that our Muslim friends don't take this verse too seriously because early Muslim sources agree that Muhammad tried repeatedly to commit suicide. He tried to kill himself so many times that we could fairly call him the prophet of suicide or the suicidal messenger. Sounds like the name of a punk band. Now, there are various reasons people decide to kill themselves. Some people have psychological problems that give them an urge to kill themselves. Others don't have any mental health issues, but so many bad things happen that they don't see any point in living. Still others have more nefarious reasons. My girlfriend left me, so I'll teach her a lesson and kill myself. With regard to Muhammad, the questions we need to ask are, one, why did Muhammad try repeatedly to kill himself? And two, what do his suicide attempts tell us about his psychological state? Let's read some Muslim sources on Muhammad's ongoing battle with suicide. In the history of At-Tabari, we learn that Muhammad was suicidal before the first verses of the Quran were revealed to him. During one of his annual pagan religious retreats, a spirit appeared to him and said, Muhammad, you are the messenger of God. Muhammad then ran home to his wife Khadija and begged her to cover him. He was so terrified that he contemplated suicide. We read in At-Tabari, volume 6, page 68, He, Muhammad, said, I had been thinking of hurling myself down from a mountain crag, but he appeared to me as I was thinking about this and said, Muhammad, I am Gabriel, and you are the messenger of God. Then he said, Recite. I said, What shall I recite? He took me and pressed me three times tightly until I was nearly stifled and was utterly exhausted. Then he said, Recite in the name of your Lord who created. And I recited it. Then I went to Khadija and said, I have been in fear for my life. Notice that Muhammad was already suicidal when Gabriel started revealing the Quran to him. Gabriel had appeared to Muhammad terrifying him and causing him to think about killing himself. And only then did Gabriel give him the opening verses of Surah 96. But Muhammad was also suicidal after Gabriel began revealing the Quran. According to Ibn Ishaq's Sirat Rasulullah, our earliest detailed biographical record on the life of Muhammad, page 106, Muhammad wanted to kill himself even after the revelations started because he believed that he was possessed by an evil spirit. Muhammad was having a nightmare about a spirit physically attacking him and forcing him to recite verses of the Quran. When he finally agreed to recite the verses, the spirit that attacked him said, Read in the name of thy Lord who created, who created man of blood coagulated. Read, thy Lord is the most beneficent, who taught by the pen, taught that which they knew not unto men. Muhammad narrates, So I read it, and he departed from me. And I awoke from my sleep, and it was as though these words were written on my heart. Now none of God's creatures was more hateful to me than an ecstatic poet or a man possessed. I could not even look at them. I thought, woe is me, poet or possessed. Never shall Quraysh, that's Muhammad's tribe, say this of me. I will go to the top of the mountain and throw myself down, that I may kill myself and gain rest. So I went forth to do so, and then, when I was midway on the mountain, I heard a voice from heaven saying, O Muhammad, thou art the apostle of God, and I am Gabriel. So Muhammad received the revelations, but after his encounter with Gabriel, he was convinced that he was possessed by an evil spirit. Since he didn't want his tribe to know that he was possessed, he decided to kill himself. But Gabriel stopped him. Gabriel had his work cut out for him, however, because Muhammad had a habit of trying to jump off a cliff whenever he was feeling bad. When Muhammad's wife Khadija saw that her husband was suicidal, she and her cousin Wadika talked to him and convinced him that he wasn't possessed. He was a prophet of Allah. But Wadika soon died and the revelations suddenly stopped. Guess who decided to kill himself? Let's find out in Sahih al-Bukhari, number 6982. But after a few days, Waraka died, and the divine revelation was also paused for a while, and the prophet became so sad, as we have heard, 
that he intended several times, we're talking about multiple occasions, to throw himself from the tops of high mountains, multiple mountains, and every time he went up to the top of a mountain in order to throw himself down, notice that he actually set out to kill himself numerous times, Jibril, that's Gabriel, would appear before him and say, O Muhammad, you are indeed Allah's messenger in truth, whereupon his heart would become quiet and he would calm down and would return home. So Gabriel had to regularly calm Muhammad down to keep him from plunging to his death. And whenever the period of the coming of the revelation used to become long, he would do as before, he'd head for a cliff. But when he used to reach the top of a mountain, Jibreel would appear before him and say to him what he had said before. Notice that this happened over and over again. Whenever Gabriel didn't show up with a new revelation, Muhammad would climb a mountain in order to kill himself. What can we learn about Muhammad from these passages? Well, when Gabriel spoke to him for the first time, he became suicidal out of fear. So when Muhammad was scared, he wanted to kill himself. After Gabriel roughed him up in his dream and he woke up with verses of the Quran in his head, Muhammad tried to jump off a cliff because he thought that he was demon-possessed and he didn't want his tribe to make fun of him. So Muhammad would rather die than hear people calling him names. Later, when Muhammad was convinced that he was a prophet and Gabriel would ignore him for a while, Muhammad would again try to kill himself because he thought that Gabriel had rejected him. So Gabriel would have to show up and talk Muhammad away from the edge of the cliff. Muhammad, it seems, was a very needy man with a very fragile psyche. Not surprisingly, the revelations he received had to constantly remind him and his critics that he wasn't insane. Surah 7, verse 184 of the Quran. Do they not reflect? There is no madness in their companion, Muhammad. He is but a plain warner. Surah 23, verse 70. Or do they say he is possessed? Nay, he has brought them the truth, but most of them hate the truth. Surah 34, verse 46. Say, O Muhammad, I do admonish you on one point, that you stand up for Allah, in pairs or singly, and reflect within yourselves, your companion, Muhammad, is not possessed. He is no less than a warner to you, in face of a terrible penalty. Surah 37, verses 35 to 36. For they, when they were told that there is no God except Allah, would puff themselves up with pride and say, What? Shall we give up our gods for the sake of a poet possessed? Nay, he has come with the truth, and he confirms the message of the apostles before him. Surah 52, verse 29. Therefore remind and preach, O Muhammad, by the grace of Allah, you are neither a soothsayer nor a madman. Surah 68, verse 2. You, O Muhammad, are not, by the grace of your Lord, a madman. Surah 81, verse 22. And, O people, your companion, Muhammad, is not a madman. Remember that these verses were delivered for recitation. Muslims had to recite these over and over. Muslims from the time of Muhammad right down to right now recite verses insisting that Muhammad was perfectly sane. Apparently, Muhammad never realized that the more you tell people you're not crazy and the more you demand that they say you're not crazy, the crazier you sound. Because normal people don't need to go around saying, I'm not crazy, I'm not crazy, I'm not crazy. Normal people don't need to tell people, I want you all to memorize and recite these verses saying that I'm not crazy. So, sorry Muslims, but your prophet sounds really, really crazy. Islam is a religion that flows out of the insecurities and emotional problems of a 7th century, mentally unstable, suicidal caravan trader. Think about the true role of Islam for Muhammad. Muhammad couldn't bear the thought of people making fun of him. Surprise, surprise, in Islam, the penalty for making fun of Muhammad was death. Even today, drawing a cartoon of Muhammad might get you killed. Muhammad was terrified of rejection. He would rather die than be rejected by his tribe. He would rather die than be ignored by Gabriel. Lo and behold, his tribe was eventually forced, with 10,000 swords at their throats, to accept him as a prophet. Leaving Islam was a death penalty. You couldn't reject Muhammad if you wanted to. 
and Muhammad became, in Islam, the most important human being in all of history, someone Gabriel could never ignore. Today, more than a billion Muslims spend a shocking portion of their lives showering Muhammad with praises and blessings. Fourteen centuries after his death, his followers are still giving him the affirmation and attention he craved, not realizing that the point of the religion was to keep him from killing himself. The sad irony is that the religion that was meant to preserve Muhammad's life eventually got him killed. If you'd like to know how Muhammad died, click on this video. Spoiler alert, he was poisoned by a Jewish woman whose family had been slaughtered by Muslims. The worst part is that millions of people have been killed in the name of a religion whose purpose was to protect the life of a single man. And people are being killed every day, all because Muhammad needed to feel important. This is one of the many reasons Muhammad is the last person I would ever call a beautiful pattern of conduct.